Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Given the sheer diversity of snakes in the modern world, it can be a little surprising that these distinctive animals have a pretty poor fossil record, especially before the Paleocene Cretaceous boundary. Indeed, although basal snake relatives are thought to have diverged from other squamates during the second half of the Jurassic, ophidians were rare during the Mesozoic, with the familiar modern forms only diversifying after the KPG extinction event. This was likely due to the rapid radiation of placental mammals in the Paleocene, providing a bonanza of new potential prey items. One notable group of early snakes that developed during the Cretaceous and persisted into the Cenozoic were the Matsoids, which were sometimes very large and somewhat python-like animals that probably first appeared around 98 million years ago. Although, as with almost every aspect of these snakes, this is uncertain and controversial. It is still currently not known exactly which Cretaceous Ophidians are true members of this group, with some researchers seeing Matsoiidae as an unnatural family, with the proposed genera only having superficial similarities. The most recent study from 2024 by Debajit Datta and Sunil Bajpai do present Matsoids as being a natural family, although with a more restricted membership than in older works. The authors place the group as members of Serpentes, the clade to which all modern snakes belong, being in a very basal position, more derived than the small blind snakes, but less so than the American pipe snakes. The controversy surrounding these animals is not helped by their fragmentary fossil record, which often consists of single vertebrae. However, there do seem to be some anatomical traits which unite the Matsoids, including relatively firm and flexible skulls, that were not as well adapted for swallowing large prey as in pythons and anacondas. Some Cretaceous snakes that have now seemingly been excluded from Matsoiidae include Sanaje, a 3.5 meter or 11 foot long genus from the Maastrichtian of India roughly 68 million years ago. The holotype was found in association with a titanosaur nest containing multiple eggs in addition to a 50 centimeter long hatchling indicating that this animal fed on juvenile dinosaurs. While the jaws of Sanaje lacked the wide gaping ability of modern snakes, it did possess strong protractor pterygoidea muscles that would have enabled the animal to manipulate prey items in the mouth, as well as an intramandibular joint that was able to flex greatly. This suggests that early snake relatives were already able to handle fairly large prey before the development of highly kinetic gaping jaws. Aside from hatchling dinosaurs, which would have been a plentiful source of food for fairly large ophidians like Sanaje. This genus probably also hunted small mammals, lizards, as well as other snakes. Recent studies have found that this genus was the most basal member of Ophidia, being outside the clade Serpentes that includes all modern snakes. Another basal ophidian, Najash, was native to what is now Argentina about 90 million years ago. This interesting genus was something of a transitional form, helping to show how snakes evolved from more lizard-like ancestors. Najash possessed small but well-developed hind legs, a sacrum, and a pelvic girdle connected to the spine, which are all features that have been lost in modern snakes. In addition, no other early snake relative from the fossil record have so many basal features, with the living animal being a small burrowing carnivore, probably feeding on insects and small vertebrates. Another early ophidian from South America, Dinelicia, was slightly younger, being present about 85 million years ago. At roughly 2 metres, or 6.6 .6 feet long, with a skull superficially similar to that of living boids, this genus inhabited a dry desert environment and was almost certainly semi-fossorial. It may have lived somewhat like modern sand boas, hiding under substrate and ambushing small prey. This suggests that many early ophidians were terrestrial animals with adaptations for burrowing, perhaps indicating that the common ancestors of the more derived clade Serpentes originated from somewhat fossorial ancestors. The most basal of the true snakes are actually still alive today in the form of the blind snakes, which are a successful artificial grouping of mostly small, fossorial and widely distributed animals. With a range encompassing most of the tropics, these are quite archaic forms, diverging at least 100 million years ago, although their fossil record is very poor which is unsurprising given their often tiny size. The oldest known relative of the blind snakes was the genus Boepeda, which was native to Brazil about 88 million years ago, 
and was only described in 2020. This filled in a huge gap in snake evolution, as before this no blind snakes were known from Mesozoic deposits. Notably, Boepaper was also a fairly large genus, measuring about 1 meter or over 3 feet long, which is rivalled only by two modern species of African blind snakes in the genus Afrotyphlops. This perhaps suggests that early members of this clade started out as larger fossorial snakes that underwent a miniaturization trend as they evolved. In the 2024 paper by Data et al, the Matsoids were placed as being slightly more derived than the blind snakes, meaning that if this group was still alive today, they would be considered the second most basal members of Serpentes. In their phylogenetic analysis, the authors found two clades within Matsoidae, one being comprised of small-bodied forms and the other containing medium to gigantic sized species. The small-bodied clade contained animals such as Nidophis from the Maastrichtian of Hatzeg Island, Romania, and Alamitophis, which survived the KPG extinction event in South America and Australia. There are very few images of these snakes online, as well as very little information, although both seem to have been under a metre long in life, and probably lived like small modern boas. The most basal member of the medium to large bodied clade was the poorly known genus Paolophis from the Paleocene of Argentina, which probably measured up to 3 metres or about 10 feet long. This was followed by three closely related genera, which include the recently described Vasuki, possibly the longest snake to ever live, native to India during the Middle Eocene roughly 47 million years ago. This enormous animal, which is only known from fossil vertebrae, potentially measured between 11 and 15 metres, or 36 to 50 feet long. This may have made Vasuki slightly longer than the infamous Titanoboa from Paleocene South America, although it would have been a more lightly built animal. Also unlike Titanoboa, which is probably largely aquatic, Vasuki was a more terrestrial snake that inhabited a tropical forested swamp environment, much like modern large pythons. The sheer size of this animal was likely engendered by the high global temperatures of the Eocene, allowing ectotherms to more easily reach massive proportions. In life, Vasuki would have been an apex predator, having very little to fear from other Eocene Indian carnivores. It was closely related to another large Matsoid, the genus Gigantophis, which was present during the later Eocene across what is now North Africa, but was then the shores of the tropical Tethys Sea. Early studies suggested a length of about 10 metres or 35 feet for this snake, but more recent analyses have revised this down to circa 7 metres or 22 feet. Although Gigantophis seems to have lived in near-shore estuarine environments, its bones do not show any particular adaptations to a marine existence, unlike modern sea snakes or the extinct Paleophids. Following on from this, we come to the type genus of the family, Matsoia itself. Once thought to have been a long-lived and diverse genus, emerging during the late Cretaceous and surviving into the Eocene, Data et al. found the four proposed species of Matsoia to be actually quite distantly related to each other, invalidating the genus as currently defined. Animals assigned to Matsoia inhabited much of former Gondwana and ranged between 5 and 10 metres in length. The species M. madagascariensis was recently featured in the second season of Prehistoric Planet, where it was shown preying on the small noosaurid Mashikasaurus, hunting the dinosaur much like a modern python. Another Matsoia genus, Menorana, was also native to Madagascar during the late Cretaceous and was significantly smaller being about 2.4 metres long and possibly being somewhat fossorial. Interestingly, the remains assigned to the Eocene Matsoia species M. Bai has been found to be the close relative of the youngest and most derived members of the group, which were the only forms to survive beyond the Eocene when all other forms died out. These were the Australian genera Yolunga and Wanambi, both named after the rainbow serpent of Aboriginal belief. The former was native to the famous Riversley Formation of Queensland during the late Oligocene and Miocene, which at that time was covered by mesic tropical and subtropical forests. Known from surprisingly decent remains, Yolunga may have been a semi-fossorial or semi-aquatic snake that on average probably measured between 4.5 and 6 metres, or 15 to 20 feet long, although isolated vertebrae suggest that some individuals may have reached up to 8 metres. It lived alongside a diverse variety of marsupials and other reptiles, most of which may have fallen prey to this large snake, which would have killed via constriction. 
The genus became extinct during the second half of the Miocene, as global climatic cooling led to the fragmentation and ultimate replacement of its forested habitat, with drier, more open savannah. Meanwhile, the closely related genus Wanambi was more of a generalist, and was able to thrive in cooler, drier environments, allowing the snake to persist into the Pleistocene. The genus first appeared during the Miocene, in the form of the species Andarii, which was a smaller animal at about 3 metres or 10 feet long. The Pleistocene species Wanambi naricortensis is known from well-preserved remains, which suggests that this snake generally measured between 4 and 6 metres, or up to 19 feet long. Like other members of the group, it was a constrictor, lurking by watering holes in order to ambush prey such as kangaroos, wallabies, bandicoots and smaller reptiles. The head was relatively small, and the jaws were less flexible than modern pythons and boas, indicating that the size of the prey was limited. Wanambi was present in Australia to experience the arrival of the first humans approximately 60,000 years ago, which may have spelled the beginning of the end for the last Matsoiad on Earth. However, as with other members of Australia's Pleistocene megafauna, it is still uncertain as to why this snake became extinct by around 40,000 years ago, with some combination of climate change, as well as human hunting and, and modification of the landscape through the use of fire probably being to blame. With the eventual extinction of Wanambi, the Matsui had sadly vanished after a period of roughly 100 million years, which during that time developed into a diverse array of sizes and lifestyles, with some species potentially becoming the longest snakes to ever live. Not all Matsoiids were huge, but the group did seem prone to evolving large size. Indeed, whether they are even a natural family at all has been called into question, although the more recent studies do seem to find Matsoiidae to be a genuine clade, albeit with some traditional members excluded. With the recent description of the gigantic Vasuki Indicus, who knows what future research will reveal about these fascinating basal snakes. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the early evolution of the ichthyosaurs and their relatives. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.